Jump Up Supercast, the only podcast on the internet to be made up of billions and billions of triangles. I am willing to join me this week, Brandon. Uh, go Google Stadia. Ill. I'm just a fake Tomb Raider game. And Roosevelt. Hi. Hi. Yeah, no, nothing special. Hi. <laughs> I think I that last week. Boring. <laughs> Fucking No, lazy. sometimes you need to go back to basics, you know? No sometimes work ethic. Establish a baseline. Nah. I think, yeah. 89% Somet- of people I think the we've podcast. strayed too far from God, and I'm trying to veer us back into his light. You know what I'm Fuck saying? that. Well, I have good news. <laughs> the lighting will be more dynamic from God. Oh, yeah. Using the power of the Unreal Engine 5. Holy shit. Is God oh, the Unreal Engine epic? 5. Would you say that's the wow. biggest news to happen? Uh, for this entire generation? No. Is it made up of origami? Then no. <laughs> this is it. This is, this is a week of triangles in many different forms in the yeah. video game news. Uh, which one do we start with? Let's start with the, the one that is an announcement. You know, a game announcement, right? Why not talk about that? That's always interesting. We had the shadow dropped on Twitter. Twitter. Eight o'clock in the morning. I saw the tweet. I was half awake. I said, "This can't be. This was something. Something went wrong." But no, it was just a trailer for the new Paper Mario game, Paper Mario and the Origami King. And then I finished the trailer. I said, "I'm still must be messed up because this the release date is July, which is only uh, two months away, mm-hmm. um, which is damn. wild." Uh, you gotta love so, when Nintendo does this shit. Like other people be putting out fucking expected dates like two years in advance. You know, you gotta wait. Fuck that, two months. We two didn't months. know this game existed, and it's out two months from now. Like, uh, the, the, I mean, this is crazy even for Nintendo, though, right? Like, yeah. you know, usually, like, Nintendo's no stranger to announcements that are very close to release, right? Super mm-hmm. Mario Maker 2, that, we, that was announced in a direct in February. It came out in June. We're like, oh my god, it's out in four months. We didn't know Mario Maker 2 was even existed. What do you think? Uh, this it wasn't even in the form of a direct, Right? wasn't even in the form of, like, a pre-announced... Like, even with uh, Ring Fit Adventure and Labo, both are the only games that they've announced this generation through Twitter, right? Mm-hmm. Were very uh, casual, different experiences, right? Yeah. Not direct type announcements. Yeah. Right? And they teased those both a week in advance. They were like, hey, check out our Twitter next week. We're going to have something unique and new, Right. And then and then they announced uh, Ring Fit and Labo. This game just popped up on Twitter. Like, they just tweeted it out. Like, hey, oh, pay, pay more of the origami king. It's, uh, here's the trailer. It's out in July. Okay, see ya. Mm. Peace. Like, what? Yep. The, sec- the secret is you should always be checking out their Twitter. Huh? Yeah, I mean, they look, they're, they're, their Twitter and, is... Uh, I mean, they're you not can... afraid to drop news on their Twitter. Uh, can you preload it now? <laughs> hmm? Can you preload it now? You can preload it right the day they So the game it. the game's done. The game's done. Yeah. <laughs> the game is done. Okay. All right. The game they annou- they finished the game and then they announced it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> what, what a, a what a crazy world we live in. What yeah, a I don't legend. know, man. The, this is crazy. But I feel like this is crazy even for Nintendo centers. You know, this is just like what the f- yeah. and, and this also changes just any expectation of, oh, okay, a game announcement can just happen on a random Thursday. Yeah. No leading. No no announcements of announcement. Nothing. nothing. It, it could just morning before we record, we might just get a new game announcement. <laughs> <laughs> I know the game explain guys are probably happy, right? They're like, we don't have to. They, they're not doing thirty in a row, so we can just spend a whole day on one thing, uh, right? That's game, yeah. uh-huh. um, which uh, we should actually probably talk about the the specifics of the game in the trailer, right? Because Paper Mario is a series that among the hardcore fan base has been fraught. For the last two games, three depending yes. on who you ask, I guess. But I was mad. Uh, <laughs> they are mad. Uh, but this is so. So obviously, with uh, any Paper Mario game, there will be sort of a you know cocked eyebrow. A hey, what's what's going on here? Um, and uh, the very first thing we see is Origami Peach, who I had a nightmare about last night. Uh, because she is a nightmare. Uh, just this uh, wonders out is like, will you become creased and be reborn as I have? Which is a, a weird line of dialogue for a Mario game to have, but that's why these RPGs are fun. And Mario's like, I'm good, thank you. I don't need it. And then uh, from there, we see that 
as the title indicates, the bad guy is the Origami King. His name is Ollie. It doesn't seem like a very regal name, but whatever. Who am I to judge? Oh, uh, Oliver. That's I guess it is all. Yeah, it's probably short for Oliver. Um, and then uh, from there, we get just a, a lot of quick fire shots. They don't linger on very much, including the battle system. Um, but we see uh, at various points in the trailer, Mario like driving around in vehicles. He's in a boat. He's in a car that is a shoe. He is uh, riding down some river rapids, you know, He's and, and uh, various other things. Um, but then in terms of uh, which which all looks it looks a lot like color splash aesthetic wise right in terms of uh, the the engine but i think color splash looked very good so that's fine um but then the the things that that were question marks right uh, of like what is the battle system we got a very brief thing where mario was had a bunch of rings around him right mm-hmm. and uh our par- partners back and seemingly we think that they are at this point um but yes, sort of all that having been wrapped up, right? We can get into specifics as we go. But what were your general first uh, impressions of the trailer having having finished it? Um, I think I'm. I think like a lot of people, I'm cautiously optimistic, right? I I, I think there was a lot good in here. Uh, it's hard when the last two were not so great, especially Color Splash, which was like it showed promise but still didn't. Uh, you know, I think uh, it was still held back by the framework of Sticker Star, right? This game mm-hmm. is not, does not have that problem, right? We are, I think, if nothing else, we can at least say we are free from the f- Sticker Star formula, right? This game does look very different in that regard. Uh, whether they, but it is different, right? It is not a necessarily return to form that people were asking for, but it, it is, uh, it's different. I think it's taking aspects from these older games and the newer games and kind of meshing it into something new, which I think is neat, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, I guess before I go into real specific parts of it, like I, I, generally, I'm just like I'm looking forward to it, I, and I'm I, I have I'm pretty optimistic that they they can pull it off. They I, I'm not inherently like oh this is different, so this is bad. No, I I, I think this could be really good, even if it's not the Thousand Year Door two. It doesn't have to be to be a good boy from our game. What a centrist. You're like Goldilocks. Well, yeah. can't, can't just pick one extreme. Just be angry or, or happy. Yeah, I'm Stop sorry. this caution bullshit. I'm Listen, just, uh, I'm, I'm, I learned ahead. a lesson last week on the podcast, and it was just don't have any expectations at all. So. Uh-huh. And that's become his new that's... mantra. I changed his life, apparently. Thank you, Wills. Yeah. Thank no, you. That no last problem. podcast, <laughs> Brad Brand's a new man. You know? I, I, I have no expectations. I don't want to. I don't want to be hurt again. Zen you know? Brandon, he's, he's, he's giving up on worldly desires. I'm here. I'm here for the ride. Whatever happens, happens. If it's bad, it's bad. If it's good, it's good. You know what? I'm I'm not cautious, cautiously optimistic. I'm very optimistic because Bowser is a postcard. He Bowser is. That's is enough for me. A postcard. It's a, it's a lot. It's. A, um, I mean, yeah. No, I was just gonna say. I think that. Uh, it's interesting looking at that trailer because um, there's, like I said, obviously there's the desire for the return to the turn-based battle system as it was, right? The the badges, and obviously I love Thousand Year Door a ton, um, as I think we all do, as you can look where it is on the list, um, which is number nine, in case you're wondering. Um, but uh, I think that the the biggest thing that was missing for me in uh, color splash and sticker star not the biggest thing but but uh, but a strong element of it is that there wasn't like a core conceit that was engaging to me right like oh no there are stickers that fell from the sky is like a or like oh the colors being sucked up i was sort of like uh, okay those are very i, I my, my imagination is not elicited by those things right but when yeah. like Princess Peach, the first thing you see is Princess Peach is evil now. Bowser's followed up into a floor sign, and you're on the run, and you're teaming up with Bowser's crew because people they get turned into origami become, like, brainwashed. I'm like, oh, that's a, as like a, as like a, just a pure first trailer idea. I'm it's more a big engaged idea. on that. It's a big idea. It's, um, uh, I mean, yeah, I, inherent, like, I think right off the start, they're like, hey, this is, um, 
I mean, it immediately gave me Thousand Year Door and uh, Super Paper Mario kind of like vibes, right? Of just like, just story from a story perspective, right? Of like, this is not just your usual, oh, Bowser, uh, you know, Bowser did the thing and now you have to fix the thing, right? In the case of Sticker Star, it was he released all the stickers or whatever the fuck and then in Color Splash, he sucked out all the color, I guess. Um, and this time, hey, Bowser had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Bowser it, it got in the middle of the crossfire, right? He's and he he was in the middle of being folded up into origami by the by the villain. And uh, Mario, I guess Mario saved him. Uh, <laughs> Probably, <laughs> yeah, true hero. Um, Mario and Bowser teaming up, and I think one of my favorite things about the Mario RPGs that I hold in high regard, right? So your Thousand Year Door, your Bowser's Inside Story. Um, I like when we see Bowser and he's funny. You know? I, I, I When Bowser's just the endgame villain and he has nothing else going on, I, I feel like we're missing out on something because uh, these games write Bowser so well. He's genuinely hilarious, right? And so him tagging along with Mario for this whole adventure, especially in a weakened state... To, I think that's good. that's just a fun premise on its own, right? Mm-hmm. Once again, uh, Muzzy's trying to erase Super Mario RPG. I'm not mentioning it. Well, Even yeah. though you get Bowser <laughs> on your team, and he's funny. I, Fuck I you. didn't play Mario RPG, I'm sorry. I, Fuck I, you. Once it's on Super Nintendo Online, I'll, I'll play it. But Fuck <laughs> you. Guy, he probably owns like a way to play this game, like eight different ones. Was yeah. it on yeah. the NES, SNES Mini? Yes. Alright, then we got one. Cool. Uh, <laughs> what can do? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, but, I, but, but, but is, I mean, that is, you know, that's the thing yeah. that I heavily associate with the Mario RPG series, you know, both in the original and in the paper games for, you know, three of the first four, right? And then Bowser just becomes the bad guy again. It, it was sort of a bummer. Um, and so I'm I'm interested in getting him and getting, uh, so we should get specifics. The, the partners that we see are, are a babam for sure, right? Uh, yeah. Who's walking around behind you. Uh, seemingly some other ones from little screenshots and stuff is um a koopa right and then also seemingly maybe kamek and bowser jr which is cool and then bowser also follows behind you for a little bit who knows if he's permanent but um they are excluding obviously bowser jr and bowser they are the generic designs for these characters right it is just a bob bomb he's not wearing a hat you know or, or anything else um koopa is just a koopa do you are you how do you feel about this? Reserving because of the lack of partners. I, Reserving first, judgment. First I mean, they might that. pull something out. So I don't know. We just only saw a trailer. There might be some twist to them later on. You know. I mean, well, so far what it's worth, uh, at least with toads, we've seen different kinds of toads, right? Uh, we saw like an explorer toad uh, mm-hmm. who's following you in the in the in the kind of desert section, uh, and we saw some other. Uh, but otherwise, the enemies are definitely the generic ones, right? But I'm not inherently opposed to that. Like, sure, yes, I would like them to have unique designs with their own names because that just inherently makes them more memorable, right? Being their own unique character. Um, so that's a disappointment, like, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but at the same time, I'm like, as long as, like, I will, as long as the writing is good and those those characters are their own individual characters that stand out in their writing, right? So I can recognize the bomb's dialogue is okay well in my head sure i'm calling him babam but that's my babam right that's the babam that uh followed me along my journey and i know him has a character right he likes to sit down and so i i think they can pull that off even with the generic versions of these enemies as long as they have a a, they're good little mini arcs uh, and they're written well i i'm not really like I don't think it's like a huge, huge loss, yeah, you know? That's something that they can mitigate. Like, it's not that big of a deal, in my opinion, you know? You're right. They can do that, and I'm sure they will do that. But just because they can doesn't mean they should. I mean, well, I mean, no, sure. Would it kill them to give them a little jacket or something, you know? I mean, I, I mean, patch. I don't disagree, right? But I'm saying, but like, I'm not going to go back and look at what should have been and what shouldn't have been, right? It's gonna take what we what we're getting, right? Which is that they're generic. That is what it is, right? Um, and yeah, just... that is what it is. But you could also say that 
They could have. 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 Yeah. Also, right. they probably should have. They could have, and they should have. We don't know sure. everything about them yet. Let's let's hold on. We don't. We sure. don't. Well, we're all talking about it. You know, a fucking thirty-second trailer or whatever. Uh, yeah, but I mean, don't get disappointed seconds. already. Like, don't already not, feel disappointed. You can just look at it and say, hmm, you know, this. I'm. I'm not saying I'm disappointed or anything bad about the game. I can just. I'm just saying I, I look at it and say, okay, I. You know, this isn't. This isn't what I was expecting with all the rumors and people blowing smoke up my ass about, you know, return to form. That's what everybody kept fucking saying in the rumor. So I was like, you know, maybe I was expecting a little more. I'm not mad about it, but uh, and I'm still excited about the game. I'm still going to play it. I don't have any expectations. You dropped that E word. You said it. You said maybe I was expecting a little more. You just said it. Whatever. Man, <laughs> I, I think Maybe is... the internet. Okay, I'm never gonna listen to the internet again. How about that? Well, because I, I, I think, think, I think we're looking it's at about rumors. Damn time. <laughs> we're looking at rumors. Uh, always discount qualitative statements, right? Yeah. Like the game's looking good. Is like, a, like you know, that's we. Who knows, right? But like the game exists. That's a yes or a no, right? Super yeah. Mario did exist, right? So that was they were right. Is the thing about the return of form. That so sometimes there. people look at a game and you know and, and they. They tell it to someone else, and that person tells it to someone else. And along some the way, some of, that, some of that information yep. gets, you know, a little... Uh, maybe some to someone it was perceived as, oh, well, it's a it's an RPG battle system that doesn't use... And, and I think this is one real positive, by the way. They Consumer are battles. not using the Consumer uh, battle system from the last two, right? It is different, right? And, and most importantly, it is not resource-based anymore. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you don't just collect stickers or cards that are one-time use uh, mm-hmm. that as, once you use them, they're gone. No, like that, that, that doesn't exist anymore, right? The, this battle yeah. system uh, just has your traditional, like you have your move set, right? The two things um, we've seen is a jump and a hammer. <laughs> right. You can jump and a hammer. Because uh, we, we, like <laughs> we saw a brief glimpse, like I think, I guess on the Japanese website. Like and I, I do mean very brief glimpse. Yeah, like twenty of, seconds. Yeah, of how battles n- play out, but we know enough to say it's not resource based anymore. Which is like, Wait, hold up, we also yeah. saw him wearing the Metroid helmet, so you never know. That's part of the battle system now. Well, well it just you know, becomes never, a yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that Metroid helmet might be major key. No, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Like they did address, I think, the biggest complaint from the last game, right? Um, and and. Uh, while we're at it, when it comes to partners, um, now we saw a Chinese screenshot of Toad Racist. in battle with you, right? And uh-huh. they they removed Toad in every other version of that. Screenshot. And they took that down after people noticed it. Yeah, and they took that screenshot down. So I think they're clearly hiding something. There's more to show in this game than just this two minute trailer that was really only like. 40 seconds of footage, right? Um, there's there's clearly a lot for them to show off, even though the game's only two months out, but they still clearly have stuff they're not ready to talk about yet. There's a second um, trailer. Wait, is this an RPG? That's that's a big question, though. Uh, I mean, it's RPG-ish. <laughs> but is I mean, it, it's like that's a... what I want to know. Is it an RPG? Do you level up? Do you have stats? I well, mean, I, the, I mean well, to be fair, Paper Mario was never stat heavy. Do you game? have badges? <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, I don't expect badges. Fuck. Uh, yeah, b- badges won't be there. Uh, I, I'm almost certain badges won't be there. But like the the people really over, like even Mario and Luigi was w- which is a very kid friendly franchise, right? But like even that game is way more stat heavy than Paper Mario ever was. You know, like you had three stats to level up: your HP, your FP, your BP. That's it. <laughs> you yeah, level you up and you would level up one of those aspects. Though. That wasn't like the, some. Yeah, no, I get that. Sort of progression. Well, that's, no, I, and that, sure, and that's what I'm. That's what we're but, curious about. Is obviously, will there be progression? How will it be? So, right? Because we see the main gimmick in this in this battle system is is the rings, right? Where you see briefly, um, there's a timer in the upper left. There's a limited number of ring movements, and you can uh, there's like four rings, I think, maybe five. I don't know. But the enemies are positioned in different quadrants on those rings. And you can move them, and we see briefly you line them up, and if you have all the enemies in a line, your de- your attacks do a multiplied damage, right? And so clearly, I would say that there's there's a puzzle solving element, right, to the battles, right? Of here you go, you have limited, you know, sort of the timer and the moves indicator clearly say there's a limited with limited resources, do the best attack you can, 
right? Um, and so I wonder if that'll be where I don't know if there's leveling up necessarily, right? But I wonder if that will be where either progression, both in complexity of the battles and in terms of your resources available to you, will go, right? Um, and that because to me, like you said, leveling up is important because it represents progression and uh, not necessarily the fact that like, oh, we're getting star points, right? It's is does the battle system change and evolve in ways that are interesting throughout the game? Right. Um, and that's what I'm that's why I, I think mean, was if we, missing if particularly we're unlocking, in Superstar. If we're unlocking new moves, better versions of moves, you know, whatever, and, and obviously your HP will increase, right? I mean I'm fine. That that's progression to me, you know? Like it doesn't have to be an XP system, you know what I'm saying? Sure. It doesn't have to be, but I wanna have it to the point where I'm not going, what is the point of actually battling? You know? Where in Sticker Star there was absolutely no yeah sure, but like I here. I don't think that like an I don't think that uh, an XP system is what determines is it worth doing a battle or not. You know what I'm saying? Like I there has to be something. I don't think there that, has to be something. I don't think the two are inherently tied. Like I, I you know they're not and you're they're not. But that's I mean that's the easiest one. What are you going to do? That's the easiest sure. one. Sure, you can think of something else, but there there has to be something. Is what I'm saying. I don't want there to be nothing and just. You know the point. The battles once again are completely pointless. There, uh, they there's absolutely no point to them unless you want to say, oh, well, they're fun. But you know, maybe they will be because in sure. fucking Sticker Star and Color Splash, they were not. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think the problem with Sticker Star and Color Splash, I, I think, because people love to like quantify it to one reason, like one reason, right? Like, oh well, the battles were pointless because uh, you didn't have XP, right? I think, but I think it was a combination. Of things. It was no XP, but also you would waste resources doing battle, so you were actively uh, punished for taking part in battle, right? That yeah. was the problem with Sticker Star and Color Splash, in my, at least in my opinion. Also, they weren't really that fun either. Uh, and, and they weren't yeah. that fun, yeah. Um, God, I'm so glad I only played the good Paper Mario games. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. But, but, like, I think that, like, even if there's not an XP system, I think as long as, like, battles on purpose, at least, like, and you were progressing in some way. Not even, I don't even think that has to mean, like, you know, through XP, right? Like, I, again, like I said, if you're getting new moves as you progress, if you're getting HP upgrades as you progress, right? And then I mean, obviously. Yeah, we're on the same page. I agree. We just give us a purpose. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, but I'm, saying, I, I'm saying, I'm trying to remove this idea that, like, an individual level has to, an individual battle has to level you up. I don't think that progression only means that. I, I'm fighting against that notion. Well, I, okay, sure, but oh, oh, I mean that's the first thing I mentioned because the other fucking Paper Mario games, the first three had XP. Okay, but uh, let's okay. So not, Paper right. Mario, oh. uh, let's not it pretend did have that, XP. No, 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 no. Hold on. It had XP, right? And all it did was make your HP go up. That's not really. Uh, if your HP is going up in other ways, I don't think that's that big of a change from. It had Mario. something. Oh my it had god! Something. Like instead of leveling up to get my H, my one stat, which is HP. P up. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> the, I will not take this fucking. No, like, uh, I, it's it, it, no, no, no. I, I just I get when Thousand Year Door people ha have a certain way, but when <laughs> Super Mario, which already fundamentally changed the way that this series works, when they're like, oh well, this is not what I what, what I'm used to. Like, no, get out of here. <laughs> I think Thousand Year Door people are fucking the cancer of Paper Mario series. What the say. fuck? <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's lot. the best fucking game of the, in the fucking series. Okay. We get it. You can I'm fucking... Saying, all I'm saying is a Super Paper Mario fan has no right in being like, well, this is different, so this is bad. You can like Super Paper Mario in Thousand Year Door. It's fucking possible. I'm one of those I'm people. I'm I was. Uh, I'm saying am I. Like, it, there I has to be it. this stupid no fucking divide that Super makes no Mario. fucking sense. <laughs> no one is saying Why are we... I don't know. Such a dumb argument. Why does there have anyway, to be a divide? It origami makes no fucking King, sense. Origami King. Uh, <laughs> there's some other things that are immediately. Uh, the one thing I was going to say that got me excited. Yeah. Because, because Color Splash got. Color Splash, I think, is a game that was 90% of the way to being a good game and then like fell on its face with the battle system, right? Yeah. Had, um, yeah. Well, more but, than the battle system, but yeah. 
Uh, but the, uh, the biggest, one of my problems with Color Splash in specific was that it was very much like Mario levels, right? Here's the grasslands, here's the desert, here's the whatever, right? Yes. Um, I, the, the brief environments they show off in this trailer are like, I'm like, oh man, I'm really, these are all weird and dynamic in a way that I am interested in seeing and exploring, right? Even like yeah. the desert level is like, it's nighttime, it's all purple. You see this sort of, uh, neon sniffit city that sort of has like a, you know, like a, a Vegas vibe almost to it, right? Um, you, you see, like, this town that's, like, Japanese and a, a plenty of other styled, I guess, and, you know, all these other little different snippets of, of environments. And that, to me, I was like, see, that in another way, you know, going back to that thing of progression, is also sometimes it's just like, oh, I'm excited to not know the next environment I'm going to, right? That, in its own way, was this thing that Sticker Star truly lacked for me right it was just like i i i could have yeah, guessed you know as soon as i hit world two i knew all the other areas i would be hitting i'm in that going game, to the basically. desert i'm going to the jungle i'm going whatever yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and so i don't know hopefully hopefully that keeps up right no and I, I yeah because I, I think the sticker star and color splash it, it was like one they used the generic mario environments that you're used to right and two it was split up by levels like a 2d mario game right like you go to 2 1 2 2 2 3 both of those things seem to be absent here right which is great. Uh, like the when we saw the, for example, Mario driving the shoe or driving the boat, right? We saw these very big, vast, open-ended areas, right? Which even for Paper Mario is like, I mean, even when you go back to the RPG Paper Mario, it's like, can you remember areas that were that open-ended? I mean, yeah, you know it's sort I mean? of. Those, the the first Super Mario games, I would say, the chapters of those games are. I was thinking about this. Like a lot of the times, it is just you're going right a lot, right? And but yeah. sometimes mm-hmm. you'll, and you'll circle back and stuff. But it's how good is are those chapters? It's sort of obscuring that fact, right? Is, are are or is it throwing you off, right? And I think like chapter four and Thousand Year Door, right? Because you are just literally doing back and forth. It's it's one of the worst at hiding that, and it's why it's one of my least favorite chapters in that game, right? And so that's why you know even if there isn't probably going to be a wealth of stuff to do in that desert environment or in that, you know, there'll probably be like eight or nine points of interest, maybe like that, that creates the illusion of, of exploration, right? Which sometimes is all you need in terms of just keeping you engaged as a player. Right. So, um, any other larger thoughts on on the Origami King we want to yell about before we move on? Or <laughs> why hasn't there been Mario at this point? <laughs> why hasn't there been a, a sidekick that's a bullet bill? That's what I want to know. Because he would die on his first attack, he would be dead. No, come on. So would Obama. So would Obama. So you you, you got me. <laughs> okay, there was there was a clear counterpoint. And you took it immediately. <laughs> uh, no, I mean I just hope. Uh, I mean, the partners I think is my biggest like. I wouldn't say concern. I guess, yeah, it's concern. It's my biggest concern, right? Um, I hope that they are implemented in a way where they are memorable and in a way that uh, they're fun to use uh, gameplay-wise too, right? Like, I, I, I like that the partners had a gameplay purpose in the original two, right? Um, so j- just those two things I would very much like. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, I'm... Bring back I'm XP. Make Muzzy Mag. Bring, bring back XP. Make it a... Make a... 2D platformer where you can change from 2D to 3D. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Speaking of 3D, that. you could potentially make that game on the Unreal Engine 5. Wow. Oh, no. Wow, it looks so good. Imagine how good it would look if Nintendo did that. Imagine Nintendo, <laughs> hire every man. Nintendo, hire, hire every, every man. man. <laughs> um, that is, so you so we that was uh, part of Jeffrey Keeley's big summer games announcements things this week was was hey we're gonna be showing off the the Unreal Engine five tech demo and then we're gonna talk to Tim Sweeney and friends for about an hour. So. And then Digital Foundry will do a video right after that. So if you want for, you're looking for specifics on the technical side of things. Oh, baby, we are not the place to look. Check out, uh, check out D- those places instead. Digitalfoundry.com. They're there. Um, um, but on the high level, on the high level, the two sort of th- th- larger things. I, I have the press release right in front of me for this, right? The two things they want you as a press person to know is... They have this nanite virtualized micro polygon geometry. What the fuck does that mean? Well, let me let you know. Basically, uh, they've been able to reduce polygon load 
in an engine in this engine right and the specific reason they showed off this like area with a lot of craggy rocks a lot of boulders a lot of little pebbles right is because to make all those things you got to have a lot of polygons a lot of triangles right and so normally in previous games you would have to skip over that right instead of having actual pebbles on the ground you just have a flat texture with pebbles on them right um in ue5 that polygon load is uh, they say it's like basically non-existent who knows if that's actually true but it's incredibly lessened right and so by doing that you can get way more detailed environments right uh the the fidelity of what they showed off in this thing i mean i the god of war art director went on twitter and was like good luck to whoever wants to make a game that's 30 hours long that looks like this because it's probably not going to be me <laughs> um and the other thing was, by the way, was just the lighting. They were like, hey, you know, we now have it where uh, if you put a light source, it, can, it will dynamically be cast appropriately. So you can just move that light source because a lot of the times, whatever lighting works in a video game up to this point, is there's actually a lot of trickery and there's a lot of hard coding and there's a lot of time that goes into that. And they said, hey, we can save a lot of time on this because it, now it dynamically does it itself as the engine does. So those are the two things they want you to know. If you work for IGN.com and us, I guess. So I'm so <laughs> glad I don't. Um, I mean, I don't know. it looks fucking good, but uh, yeah, just show me games. I don't give a fuck about a demo, whatever the I, fuck. Like, inherently, I don't think tech demos are exciting. All right. I, I think tech demos. Unless are it's like... uh, Space World with a Ganon. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. going to say that. Ganon, like, Space World 2. Or FF7 or really, remake yeah. and PS3. Really, really, really good that they state your expectations that way, you know? Uh, with the, <laughs> There's that E word. Yeah. Gonna be they ruined game my game, life. Right? Um, no, but. Um, no, I, I I think that goes through, like, tech, I don't know. Like, tech demos set these weird expectations of this is our oh, next thing game yeah. whatever. Oh, I mean, this they yeah. said this won't be on PS5 until late 2021, right? <laughs> yeah, Unreal Engine 5 straight up won't be, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, developers can't even use it yet, I believe. Or if they can, it's very limited, right? I don't think, I don't think Epic has even finished, like... <laughs> the documentation where they could send it out to developers then, right? I'm like, hey, here you go, here's the Ninja 5, right? Um, you can make your games now. Uh, so obviously, AAA games on the PS5 and Series X are going to be using Unreal Engine 4 for the next two, three, maybe four years, right? They did say that it's 4, it's compatible. So games that are currently being developed on Unreal Engine 4 can then be they they intend in to make it very easy to port them to Unreal Engine. Very right. okay. That's okay. That's fair. That, like that's, like they're, they're doing they're... with Fortnite. Like, so. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, Fortnite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Fortnite's gonna transition to UE five at some point. Um, but um, I don't know. I just uh, I, I mean I, I I will give Epic some slack here because this was clearly like they said this was gonna be their GDC presentation. Obviously, mm. GDC got canceled. Right, <laughs> yeah. uh, because of COVID nineteen, and um, but the, but that's to say, well, if it's a GDC, well, this is very much targeted towards developers. Now, this is not like for people at home, right? This is not for the press. Well, I mean, tech demos are always like this, right? Like, uh, like you know, like they always are the weird part of the conference where they get very in the weeds, and you know, ninety nine percent of the audience is like, "That's a lot of ducks in that bathtub." Yeah. You know, like yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Over. Yeah, but, uh, I, but... I, I don't know. It's, I think it's weird because, like, I mean, the other announcement that that was at the Keeley thing, the Keeley went in being like, "Look, this is just fun and cool," and then that ended up being a really exciting announcement, which we'll talk about, right? But then mm. this one was like, "This is gonna change," and it, it, you're not wrong, right? Unreal Engine Five is objectively the biggest deal for next generation because ninety five percent of the games that you play will be running on that engine. Right, that is inherently a big deal. But like, I don't know to hype as a game like, oh, as God. as a person that doesn't work in dev, it, you have to sort of separate yourself a little and, bit, right? You have to you have to think two yeah. steps removed, essentially. Yeah, um, but that, they did like, have some other, other stuff. issue with my my other issue with the tech demo part, right? It's just like I mean, and I guess specifically what we saw, right, is like, um. You know, it, they make this expectation of like, oh, like, well, this is what AAA games are going to look like, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, but people like, on Twitter, I think, already are under that impression. Yeah, but like the reality is, hey, to, I mean, like the God of War art director said, right? Like, I mean, to make a big scale game like a God of War, for example, and have it at that fidelity, every part of the environment, 
Um, yeah. e- Epic may be telling you, oh, look, we did this with 20 people uh, in seven months, right? Yeah, it's um, like seven minutes long. <laughs> uh, yeah, to, to make a full video game that's the size of God of War, where the environment is so particularly detailed in each and every aspect, that no matter how easy, quote unquote, they tell you to do, I mean, it, that inherently just means, hey, oh man, like the work to get to what your expectations of a AAA game are at that visual fidelity will skyrocket even from the previous generation, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. which is already super super high <laughs> mm-hmm. you know um so like i don't know just setting this expectation oh uh, this is this is what you should expect don't 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 you shouldn't expect anything less than this <laughs> yeah. like, god i hope people and man, then like the, i've uh, already seen people expect it, yeah like, and then sorry the final part of it that i'm just like i don't know like they say this is this is this is the showcase technical showcase for the playstation 5 right uh, look at what the PlayStation 5 can do. But, like, we've been told all year long, essentially, the big game changers for this next generation are the CPU and the solid-state drive, right? Um, and uh, meanwhile, like, you have... Uh, there, there's been a bunch of analysis from people that's like, oh, hey, hey, this tech demo that's supposed to be this next-generation showcase, also, you know, it, it can be done on... PCs right now, <laughs> you know. Sure, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, it's a, when people say that stuff, they're talking about from the current generation of consoles, right? They're not saying what PCs yeah. right now. No, yeah, but no, but even then, like, we have been sold on this next generation as like, well, this is going to be a big leap, even for PCs, right? But like, this this was not like, I mean, a twenty seventy is not even a twenty seventy super is not even like the top end graphics card. <laughs> you know? I mean, we we have this every time there's a new generation, though, right? Yeah, like, yep. Uh, I I guess I don't know. But this, just, this, I, I remember this happened specifically a lot with this gen, like like with 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 PS4. But this Xbox gen, One. it made sense because this gen, they did ha- have, they did come in weak. That's just a fact. These, yeah. These, well, I, I I think that this is I think that's a weird qualm to put on it, right? Like that this could be done. It's like I mean, if you look at like the the Unreal Engine Four tech demo for for PS4, like a lot of the games surpassed how that looks. You know, like I, I'm not saying I'm no, I'm saying like they're promising like okay, they're promising that like this should be this is what next gen games are supposed to be, right? Whatever, right? Blah blah blah. But mm-hmm. then like I'm just okay, but. As a tech demo that is trying to sell itself, I mean, they, they put it at Keeley Summer Game Fest, right? Which inherently means you have people like us watching who are not developers, right? Mm-hmm. And, like and they're trying to sell us on like, this is the cutting edge, but it's not. Th- is, is but like, saying, this, right? is, this is not like a leap. I, when I'm looking for next generation leaps, right? I'm looking for, they've been promising, both Microsoft and Sony have been heavily promising this as this is going to change how games are made. And I'm looking at this Unreal Engine 4 demo, 5 demo, and I'm like, this just looks like a current gen game, but prettier. I mean, um, that's. That's advertising in a nutshell. They always blow smoke yeah. up your ass. I mean, come on. I guess, but I, 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 I think, see, I, I I think, think the part where I was like, oh. next gen. There was a part where I was like, oh, the PS4 would be screaming right now was when she was flying down to that area. Right? I was like, oh, that's the part where like, hmm, the the the, the, the way that the, the, the speed at which she was flying and the way that things were loading. I was like, okay, I can see that that's a, that, that is an appreciably different thing than what would have been done on, with the thing I bought. That's currently in my yeah. house. Right? I, I, uh, I, I, I can appreciate that all this is all well and good, you know, very fancy, whatever. I fucking roll my eyes every time we talk about graphics that much. It's about the fucking games, not the graphics. I don't give a fuck about this shit. Well, no, but in that specific situation, I would say... No, I understand. Like, that I understand. segment... I'm, I'm not yeah, yeah. putting you down or anything like that. I'm just saying, in general, I hate these kinds of conversations because the graphics themselves in a vacuum mean fucking nothing. Like, if it's not accompanied by a good game, if there's not a good game in there, I don't care. Mm. So, yeah. That's all. I mean, I my, my point of attention is more. I I want to see how next gen games are supposed to change in like development philosophy and like you know, the, the, like, like I want to see the part where they, it changes the way games are made, right? I don't want to just see a graphics upgrade, and that is that's how Microsoft and Sony. They're not saying this is just a graphical thing, but like I, I mean, know, I, I want to I would I mean, like to see more of that. But what, I, I think Ills is not game. wrong in that. Like that stuff is gonna. Ma- there's almost never the like, oh, this is it. This is the game, right? Like, like I don't think that happened with this gen, right? Like, this is the game where suddenly it was... Yeah, I but knew. I would argue this gen, like, from 
a game design perspective, is not very different from last gen. The things yeah. are just bigger in scope and and uh, uh, prettier, right? I'm pretty like, sure that's all that's left, though. Like, well, is there yeah, maybe, is there more maybe left? That's maybe left. that's all that's left. We'll see. But, um, but there are other things I want to actually hit. I shouldn't plan on going that long on the uh, UE4 thing, but it's, I mean, it's fine. Uh, but they did announce two other things about Unreal Engine, which I think are neat. One, um, whenever you use an engine, right, you have to pay uh, either a fee to use it, right, or you have to pay royalties on it. And uh, Unreal Engine was actually known for being very greedy back late last gen, right, which is sort of why Unity was, was gaining prominence, and they sort of have worked to go against that this gen, Um uh, in various different ways, but the thing they announced this week was that uh, you you know after you haven't you haven't had to pay p- fees for Unreal Four for a long time. You will continue to have to pay fees to use Unreal Five, and for the first million dollars of revenue you get, you don't need to pay royalties. Um, which well, they're is, rich now. I mean, they are rich now, right? <laughs> but that's but I think that's neither the first million is the thing that only matters. That does not matter if you're Capcom, right? You don't care that you're losing a hundred thousand dollars off of your first million. Right. Yeah. yeah. But if you are a small uh, team of fifteen people, that's a lot. You know, that's a huge yeah. deal. Um. And so I thought that was that was a neat thing that just to do. Right. Uh. And clearly, yeah, it's mean, to it, get people on their on yeah, their engine. That makes sense. But it, you know, it's it's good to uh, hey, here's more options for your de- for it's a good strategy. For smaller developers, right? Because because Unity has pretty much taken over in that space, right? But hey, maybe we'll start seeing like indie games that use Unreal Engine, right? Yeah. I think we kind of already have this gen, but, like, even more so now, right? Like, hey, mm-hmm. you don't even have to pay that 5% fee if your revenue is within a million. Yeah. Um, hey, um, like, and- more reason to use... that. I mean, that means, essentially, for a lot of games that are never going to hit that threshold, y- using UE5 is completely free. And I think yeah. that's very cool. Yeah. Um, and then the other one is that they announced is that there's a thing called Epic Online Services, right? Which basically is the the SDK, the software development kit that they used to for Fortnite. They built it for Fortnite, right? They were like, we've we figured out this like friend system with matchmaking and lobbies and achievements and leaderboards and everything else and accounts, right? We've done that now for all the major platforms, right? Which is like Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, PC, Mac, Android, iOS, right? Um, and they've now made it into a free to use SDK for your own games, right? And you don't even have to make epic accounts to then use like f- with this thing. You can have your own systems and your own little internal architecture, right? But this is a thing that you hear a lot for smaller teams is you say, hey, why isn't there online for this? And they go, you, you can't just put online in a game like it takes a lot of work and a lot of uh, you know you you have to you have to code for this stuff and i'm very curious if this is easy to implement into existing games on ue 4 and 5 which they is, is sort of what they're saying about it then suddenly a lot of smaller games that may not have online that's either good or or even there at all may suddenly have a lot more feasible way of implementing it in the games which i think is yeah neat. i the, i mean hopefully i it i think with that aspect, I don't know. It's like we, we, we've heard a lot of promises from a lot of companies of like, you know, a lot of third party companies of like, hey, you know, we're we're, we're making it easy to implement. Here's a open source suite of uh, online tools that you can use. But Yeah, but I think it's different when it's the engine that you're using, right? When it's the people that are making that engine, right? And it's just a hopeful thing, right? Come on. Uh, but yeah, so there it is. Uh, that is that is the epic UE, uh, Unreal Engine 5. We're going to see that logo a lot. So just get used to that. Uh, a logo we haven't seen for a little bit, though, um, that is back, though, is, is is the Hawkman himself. Tony Hawk, pro skater, <laughs> one plus two, is, is uh, been, it was announced. That was also a Keeley thing. That was the thing that was alluded to earlier that was the, the little... Um, cool and fun. Cool and fun. And uh, I would say it is cool and fun. Coming September 4th, this is just a... a well, not just, but it, it is a full-on... Uh, I think are they saying re- remake or remaster? Okay, Activision calls these games remasters just like they called Crash and Spyro remasters, but like they're remakes. Look at, look yeah, at the upgrade up that Crash and Spyro yeah. got, and you could set your expectations accordingly. Right? Yeah, those Which are big of, Yeah, Vicarious Visions, who are the people that worked on some of those remasters, are working on this game. Yep, um, been, I mean they did the Crash trilogy, and they did a great job, right? Yeah, I think Vicarious Visions is the perfect developer to make sure that I have confidence in this game, and that all of you should have confidence in this game <laughs> because uh, they. I'm speaking for me. Yeah, no, I yeah I am because 
Fuck. The Crash Trilogy did a perfect job of like, here's the original games, how you remember them, but at a like in terms of how they feel and the the content and all that. Uh, but they just look like a current generation game, which is exactly what I want from this kind of project. And hey, you know Tony Hawk has I'll that speak for feel. myself. I'm very happy about this. Fucking Tony Hawk <laughs> yeah. is great. It looks fucking good from what we've seen so far. I mm-hmm. I can't wait. I, I will play this game. Yeah, it's, it has all the tracks, all the stages from the first two games in it. But will it have um, Spider Man? That's a good will question. Spider Man. Uh, what about the music? Well, we have we they gave the soundtrack, uh, and it's eighteen of the. Tw- they said it has all the same music. Well, no, no, they, they said it has most of the same music because it has oh, eighteen okay. of the twenty four songs that were in the original two games. Okay. It's okay, um, I hated the soundtrack in the original anyway. Well, a whole, that's a controversial opinion. Right yeah, there. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> People uh, heavily associate those games with those soundtracks. People are corny. Uh, but oh, um, they they Gold mentioned that they in. like look they, they they copied over the original physics system, right? Yeah. Um, of course, and, and it's getting uh, upgrades too, right? Like it's they're, yeah, they're adding uh, in reverts, they're adding in lip tricks, and they're adding in wall plants, which are all things that got added in later games that are all just good additions, right? Like especially yeah. reverts. Um, and I'm happy that they're in the game now. Um, and they also good, confirmed good, good stuff. Uh, yeah, create a skater, create a park are both back. They're adding in online multiplayer awesome. modes. Um, and oh yeah, online play. multiplayer. That's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Did you guys see the before it got released? Tony Hawk couldn't keep his mouth shut. And he was just like <laughs> he was texting messaging that. people. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that they were like, oh, they're making a remaster of the first Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games, and obviously that got put on the internet. <laughs> so people were like, hey, Tony Hawk's telling everybody this. Well, yeah. you know, cut him some slack. It was his birthday. It was um, his birthday. Oh, was it? Oh, well, happy birthday, yeah, Tony Hawk. <laughs> Maybe somebody will recognize you at an airport and not think you're just the guy that looks like Tony Hawk. Yeah. yeah. He's, gonna, he's, he's still the last guy we're going to kill in the race war, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Uh, uh, <laughs> he appreciates the hesitation. <laughs> yeah, uh, if, you, if you haven't seen that tweet, that sounds real weird. But, <laughs> but that is, um, yeah. Any other, I mean, this is a series ones? that has not been treated well previously. Five was like, atrocious. <laughs> It was yeah, so bad. Five was atrocious. The HD remaster that they originally tried, but like a decade ago, was bad. Yeah. Um, they did Tony Hawk Ride or whatever with the the stupid um, ride that skateboard. Peripheral. Um, God, I, another series. I'm glad I only play the good games of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, so Return to Form is. I mean, that that's exciting, right? Like this mm-hmm. is like yeah, yeah, Tony yeah. Hawk's coming back. All right. Well, there it is. That is the news for this week, right? Like I said, uh, I don't, uh, there was actually a lot. There was a lot of different things to get to uh, in various ways. But, uh, you know, we're not done. We still got plenty to do on the list. The list. The list. Follow I along as every week. Yeah, he didn't do it. Uh, we, I did do it. Oh, I didn't hear you it. You did do it. I heard him. I didn't no hear harm. it. Uh, uh, <laughs> as we no add harm. one game to the ever-growing list of good, bad, and mediocre games, over 180 on this list right now, 184 to be specific. If you mm-hmm. may look at this list in the paste bin below and say, oh, what? what is Luigi's Mansion doing there? Super Mario 3D Land, what's going on? That's because you missed Rankamania, Rank in the Bank, right? That happened. We did that on our Twitch channel. You could have made sure to have seen it by following us both on Twitch and on Twitter, but the archive is still up, my friends. Um, it, uh, is it going to be on the YouTube also a long It's time? already on the YouTube. It's already, it's on, already the on the YouTube. Just check it out, you know? Um, so that is... What happened in Rankomania? What does Rankomania mean? Well, that's when we re-rank games. We, re- okay. we, we, we say, hey, we, sometimes we goof it, right? We say, hey, what? how is this game here? That's a mistake. Let's move it somewhere else. And then we immediately realize, oh, well, we put that in the wrong place, and then we have to wait another year. But you know what? That's the process. That's what we do. Um, last week... Uh, what got added to the list? I, I wasn't here. What was it? I can't remember. You are here. I added a game to the list yeah, last it was... week. It was, uh, oh, I don't fucking remember. <laughs> oh, uh, no more heroes. No more heroes. No more heroes. Oh, yeah. Okay. 86. Yeah. There it is. Uh, this week I'm adding. Yep. And, you know, I think I've added a lot from this series, but screw it. We're going to keep on doing it, right? Uh, let's add what some people oh, my... claim is. Is the best of this version uh, of, of this of this style of game? Uh, Sonic Generations has has has, has, has the appropriate amount of people played this game. I'm pretty sure me and Brandon have. So yeah, 
Okay. Sorry, else. God, uh, you're missing the perfect opportunity. Fucking to like, Tony Hawk Two is on the old list. <laughs> well, I didn't know if Saf and Noah had played it, so I didn't. I didn't want to do it if they weren't around. Well, Sonic Generations. Yeah, that, I'm pretty sure Saf and Noah have not played Sonic Generations. Okay. Well, uh, Sonic Generations, in case you, uh, for those unaware, is uh, is a nostalgia play. Right, Sonic had uh, had two fan bases. There was the 3D fans. They loved Adventure. They loved Adventure Two. Uh, the freaking fricks, as as you might know them as. Yes, uh, who will never be quenched. Uh, and then there was the 2D Sonic fans. Right, loved the Genesis games and, and the true C. gentlemen. Uh, and then Sonic Generation said, "Hey guys, we're gonna do both for you." Right, uh, and. Uh, it was, I think, a largely successful venture, is the way I would describe it. Um, it, yeah. They didn't uh, go for new levels. They said, hey, we're going to do all, one level from each game right up to this point. Right? I believe that was, it was up to Sonic Colors was the most recent game, which was like 12 or something. There's a lot of, a lot of games, so there was actually a fair number of levels. But there will, always, there will be a, a 3D Sonic version of the level and a 2D Sonic version of the level, right? Where one's in 3D. <laughs> One is in 2D, one's using the spin dash, one's using the boost mechanic that was introduced in um, Unleashed. Um, Unleashed, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and then and it was also, it was fun to see some of those levels get get remade, right, it, with, with new higher graphical fidelity. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, we can talk about specifics, I guess, as we go. I, I'm of the opinion that the 3D Sonic is better than the 2D Sonic in this game, I think. Uh, I agree, because, I mean... I mean I think 2D Sonic was a great, like, way to make people feel like, oh, don't worry, hey, like, this this is what you want, right? But and I think in reality, like, we can look at it in hindsight now, especially with Sonic Mania out. Hey, 2D Sonic doesn't control as well as he used to, right? I, yeah. I, like, it just inherently, he doesn't control as well as the Genesis games. That's just a fact. It is what it is, right? Um, I think, I think Mania is sort of hard. The physics right there, down, or, it, yeah, if they don't got the physics down right, then no, he doesn't. Yeah. Uh, but the boost gameplay is the best it's ever been, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and they, it showed how good it could be in Unleashed, mm-hmm. and like that was by far the best part of that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, you know, it was honestly the boost mechanic in 3D Sonic really made 3D Sonic like, oh, this actually is like good, you know? Oh, like this is like, a decent platforming game, right? Yeah, <laughs> this, this is uh, I feel how fast I in a Sonic, Sonic game. It's, yeah, here's here's a yeah. fast. Sonic game in 3D. They had not done that before, just straight up, right? Right. Yeah. Um, and then I think Unleashed Color, uh, half of Unleashed uh, Colors, and I guess half a generation, um, make you guys, oh yeah, this is good. Like this is uh, this is actually a good way to control Sonic in 3D. Uh, and I think Generations, I wouldn't say it's the best of it. I think that Colors is still better, uh, but we're not ranking against Colors, right? Sure. Um, yeah. The, I mean, the good thing about uh, Sonic Generations is that it, it had like. Because, like, compared to, like, Unleashed, where it was, like, half of the game... It was, like, less than half the game, actually, if we're being real. It was, like, a third of the game was the actual good part. But, like, this is, like, half and half, and, like... But both Sonic's of them still are fine. actually yeah, good. Yeah, the other half is not, like, it's still good, right? Like, You're it's both still good, decent. yeah, exactly. And that's the yeah. good thing about this game compared to, like, Unleashed. It's like, wow, they finally made a Sonic game where, yeah, they had to do some weird shit with it, but, like, at least... As a whole, it's actually good. Yeah. yeah. Like, Rooftop Run is one of my favorite 3D Sonic levels. I think they did a really good job with it. Uh, uh, yeah. But yeah, it, I, anyway, it's specifically mm-hmm. Unleashed. But like, yeah, I, I think... So yeah, I, I think that the game... Uh, it was successful. It was generally well-received. I think it sort of maybe doomed Sonic Forces, right? Because I think they now they felt like they were obliged to bring back classic Sonic because of this game doing well, right? That is such a weird thing. Yeah. But... And, and, like, where the thing with, like, I, I mentioned it before, where, like, part of my issue with Sonic Mania was, like, the, like, having old levels. But, like, in this game, obviously, I don't care about that, because that was the gimmick of the, the entire gimmick game. Of the game. Yeah. That's the whole gimmick yeah. of the game. Um, so, like, for that, it, it's cool. It's like a, it's like an anniversary, I think it was an anniversary game. It was game, literally like an anniversary game. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it was a celebration of the series and the franchise, and it was just, it's, it was cool to see at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, all having been said, sorry, Moose, do you have something else to say on the game? No, um, I, I was just gonna say, you know, like all with all it said, I'm still not like I think Sonic Generations is good, 
right? But yeah. I think it, sometimes it can be talked about as if it's like, oh man, this is one of the best games ever. It's, eh, it's good. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm not super over like, the moon yeah. about it. I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying like, like you do the thing, but like it's like yeah, it's just like you know. I think sometimes it's I think there I think there was you know it was an oasis in a desert in a specific yeah. moment, right? And so I think people yeah, were like sure. they held it up. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so where I put it on the list, which you can once again follow along in the face fin below. Uh, I would say right, right in the right, maybe below Goemon at one ten. Holy shit! I thought this game was good. Than I it is good, it. but it is good. I think Goemon's really good. I think Goose Game's really yeah. good. I like Pandora's Tower, like Luigi's Mansion. I think Luigi's Mansion's a sort of comparable game to it, right? Like, for yeah, because like Sonic Generations is a very short game. Honestly, in a lot of ways, to me, it felt unfinished. Right? Like, I feel like. The game goes by well, in an instant, and like, the, well, it has the, the same problem that like Adventure huh? Two has, right? Where there's there are like multiple missions in a level, but most of those missions aren't fun. Most of them are like oh, chase knuckles and press the circle button, and you'll he'll dig in the ground. I, I hated those. Yeah. I hated those. Oh, it was like so I just wanted things. to play like the levels. I didn't want to do like the missions. Like fuck that. Yeah. Yeah, especially because like the the way generations is not really conducive to like, hey, stop and do this, right? <laughs> yeah. Why did Sonic games have to start doing that? Like, fucking Secret Rings did that stupid shit. Like, they, where they're just like, let's play through the same levels you already played through, but instead of, like, the fun part where you just rush from the beginning to the end, no, you have to collect these many rings or, like, do, yeah. like, this stupid task. And it's like, fuck it's just, that, dude. Like, yeah, the way the these games game. are set up, like, it's not It's, it's because they're, they're scared of down. the idea that people will beat it too fast. Right, they're like, yeah. oh, this Which game is has true. Like, right? I, like, you beat I, that game very quickly. <laughs> name of the game, but you can have a quick game and it can still be fun. Yeah. Bank. Well, I think yeah, they I still have. Even... It's strange to say, but I, I feel like they still haven't found a way to innovate with Sonic. Yeah, like, I mean, this this uh, was a very sort of backwards looking game, right? Like, yeah, it, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I think as a package, again, I think colors is better, right? I think that colors is a just it, it, as a whole package is a better game. So I wouldn't even consider this like the best of the modern Sonic games, right? Um. And colors had its own mm. unique identity versus this is just again it's fine taking, it was game, but it was just it was looking back. Right? Taking another um, look at it, I think I would put actually. I feel like we've said this a lot in the last couple of days. Right below Luigi's Mansion is I think where I would actually put it. Right. Uh, I mean, I'm fine with anywhere in the hundreds, I guess, but I would personally put it below Goose Game, uh, just mm. personally. Well, right. um, I mean, in. Com- I personally, I would put it a little bit higher than where you guys would, but obviously, if you guys are in agreement around there, I'm not going to try to fight it. Um, but in the case of below or above Luigi's Mansion, I would say above. Hmm. Did anybody say above? I thought you said below. Yeah, I, would I say said above. Said below. I would say below. I said right below. So not not below. Right. Yeah, I'm on, going on like seven. I mean, spots those higher. games are similar length, right? <laughs> Sure. But, I would put it. I would put it slightly above Luigi's but, Mansion. But I like, know. I mean, I don't want to like just say, "Oh, okay, you mm, know, the games only." Work I think I put length. it below Luigi. Actually, I think about. I think about it. Okay. Well, I guess. But I, I but cave, I'm sobbing right. a cave story. I am sobbing a cave story. Yeah. So above I, Luigi's Mansion, then. Yeah, I, I think because I think that okay. there there are some levels that are some of my most replayed Sonic levels in that game, which is which is uh, something that I think both Luigi and it have. But I think. Sonic well, can Characters I just say one producer. quick thing before like we're. For sure, for sure. Okay. I think that despite the games being similar length, um, I think Luigi's Mansion, for one, is just far more replayable, right? I think that you can go through that game multiple times and still have a lot, a lot of fun, which is why we were talking about the extending the length of generations is not as fun, right? Um, hmm. And I, I just, I personally, I think it's a better package. I, th- I think yeah. it's just more polished. I, think I replay fun. generations a couple of times, like just not doing the additional okay. missions, just doing the, the thing. So I... I found value in it, but uh, yeah, I would, yeah. Okay, so there it is. One hundred three on the list. Uh, Sonic Generations. Uh, surrounding it at one hundred one is Until Dawn. One hundred two, Cave Story Plus. Uh, two different games that got re ranked on the Rankomania. One hundred three, Sonic Generations. One hundred four, Luigi's Mansion. Also a game that got re ranked. And one hundred five, Ducktales. Wow, uh, wild. Changed a lot. Uh, there it is. Uh, so that is the Jump Up Supercast uh, for this week. Does anyone want to do the final phrase? I haven't had it in so long. <laughs> okay. All right. Please, Brandon, Fine, take give it. it to. I Come just on. love have it this week. I'll Come take it. Come on. Next week. 
Listen, throw him a bone once in a while. <laughs> he talks in paragraphs. He has all the bones he needs. Please don't talk in a paragraph. I'll tell you why. Hey, after after we're done recording the podcast, I'll tell you why. But you, I really hope you hurry up with the final phrase. All right. Okay. Well, all so right. while while Moose Mill prepares, not a paragraph. Uh, if you enjoy this podcast, uh, we would appreciate it if you gave us a five star rating on your podcast service of choice, where you can also subscribe to us. Uh, if that's where you found us, you can also find us on SoundCloud, where you can follow us there. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have a Twitter, Twitter dot com slash Jump Up Supercast, where we tweet whenever episodes go live every Monday and every other Thursday with the Jump Up Supercast Game Club. This week we just put one out. Our last week, excuse me, we just put one out for Night in the Woods. Take a listen for that. Greg rules. Okay uh the uh besides that of course we also have a twitch where like i mentioned we uh stream at least for rankomanias and sometimes in other situations uh you can follow us there as well it's on facebook and on youtube both of which are we are jump up supercast on those platforms and instagram um and once again i want to thank you all for listening for for participating and for just being generally nice people and musamil your final phrase i'm very excited to play paper mario it's coming out in two months You said you were cautious.